The best way to learn how to do acrylic nails when you're beginning, when you're very first starting, is just start with beads. Don't do this on yourself. This is what you want to work on, this plastic finger. And then you want to get a medium file. That's what you want to do when you first want to start learning how to do. What we're going to focus on with this kit is beads. The liquid to powder ratio on your beads, creating the exact bead. So we're just going to buff this finger up. I do recommend highly that you use fake fingers, plastic paper, a surface to work on. Don't work on people or yourself first. The reason being is beads are hard to make. Acrylic is hard to do. So you're putting too much pressure on yourself when you're expecting to make the bead on you. So don't do that. Take the pressure off. You want to have a relaxing environment, no pressure, so you can learn and explore this medium without the pressure of all that stuff. Okay, so I've buffed this guy up. So we buffed up the surface of my nail. I didn't, I don't know if you can see, but you see how I didn't do the cuticle area? Because that's a cuticle, that's shiny, because that's to simulate your actual cuticle. So we don't want to file up in on there, right? When we're working on natural nails, you're trying to remove the shine, the oils, and that's all your washing of the hands and prepping and, and spraying with a disinfectant. All, we do all that. But right now, we're just focusing on those beads. So all you need to do is buff that surface of your fake tip up, get your brush, and this is a nice oval shaped brush. Okay, now we just need a container. You can use a shot glass or a sushi dish. This is a slow setting monomer. You can use a fast setting, but this will slow things down. One of the hardest things about learning acrylic is, is it cures on you so quickly. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little monomer in my dish. And you wanna work with a pad, like a paper towel. So just grab a paper towel and fold it in about four pieces. Okay, now we want to get our brush saturated and prepared for the monomer. Okay, great. Okay, now let's put our powder in position. We'll put the powders right there. So I like to work in this sort of triangle of powders, monomer, and finger. See that kind of triangle pattern? Just so you know where it is and you're not kind of reaching for it everywhere else. Okay, so we do have a prep and bond. Okay, so prep and bond are adhesives, and I'll walk you through. And my dehydrator comes in this little bottle. It's called Let's Prep, and it's dehydrator. You wanna use this guy first, and that is to cleanse the nail and prepare it for the next product. This you can do rather generously. So we're wiping the whole nail. You wanna let that dry for a little bit. Now we wanna use Let's Bond. This is your acrylic primer. If you ever get them mixed up, just note, I wrote it right on the bottle, apply one coat after Let's Prep. It's easy to mix these two up because they're just both clear liquids, but this one is very different. If you use this one before, the dehydrator will just cancel this out. This is your adhesion. This is going to make the product stick to your finger. So we are gonna just sparingly put this on. Now on a natural nail, that will expand a little bit and move out. So don't go right to the sides when you do it, okay? So now we're ready to use our forms. We're gonna get the button. I designed mine in this really cute circle. They're a tougher paper to be able to withstand the pressure you're patting down, especially when it comes to easy gel products. It's just a little card to tell you about the little forms. Okay, so we just need one. Now you wanna peel this off and you don't need to keep that little donut circle there. You don't need that at all. Okay, and now we're gonna pinch this guy. If you've never done forms before, that's something you wanna work on. It's an art to forms in itself. Okay, so I'm just gonna pinch the end. You don't have to do this, but it does create a more narrow nail. You might as well get used to it now, it's sort of a habit. I'm gonna pinch it a little and what we wanna do is we wanna place the form under the fake nail so we can do some extension. Now these guys are kind of long, so you don't really have to use the form at this point if you don't want. I mean, we'll pop it on, but you don't really have to use it, especially right now 
if you've got a long finger that you're working with because we're just wanting to create beads. But for fun, we'll put it on. And we're gonna press that down and then we're gonna tuck it underneath. And you can even cross this over here if you want. You don't have to. I don't do that on a real finger just because often they just it's just too tight. It just can adjust the form and make it wrong, but these ones seems to be okay with. So attach it together, because sometimes the forms, no matter what form you're using, sometimes doesn't want to stick to this silicone part of the finger. It seems to be that way with a lot of fake fingers. Okay, now you're ready to create some beads and put it on here. Okay, let's take our little natural cork lids off of these guys. Now you've got a soft white and a foundation pink. I'm gonna work with these colors right now in this video so you can really see them. Okay, so this is where the creation begins. I'm just gonna warn you, you're gonna make lots and lots of mistakes. And that's exactly what you want. That's exactly where you wanna be because every mistake gets you closer and closer to the bead that you're looking for. Every nail technician that you admire, that you watch on all social media has made these mistakes. Every single one. Even those ones that you just love their work, they've made these mistakes. We all have. Okay, so I'm gonna get my brush wet. Now this is an acrylic brush. It's acrylic oval, but it is synthetic. There are two different types of brushes. There's synthetic and there's natural hair. Natural hair holds more monomer. The synthetic holds less monomer, okay? Now when it comes to working with odorless, and remember, we want slow setting monomer. The reason being is because we want things to slow down because fast setting monomer makes this hard to learn. So we're gonna get a little bead. We're gonna soak that brush in and we're going to release monomer off of the side of the dish. Then we're gonna hold it in our powder you can just hold it for about three or four seconds. You want to bring it out. Look at that tiny little bead I've got. That's okay. The size of the bead is determined on how much monomer you have in the brush. That's the only thing that decides the size of the bead, if you're getting the right ratio. I'm going to place that bead right there. Now this is odorless. So you've got some time. It's also called low odor. It's known as odorless in the industry, but we also refer to it as low odor. This is also slow setting. Look at that. I'm gonna let that sit for a few seconds, it sort of adjust to itself. And then it's about now that it's ready. See how it's not running? That's what you're looking for. This is what you, you're going to do, and you're gonna do it a lot. I, I, it's, and it's okay to do that. It's normal. You're gonna do more of these. See that? See how it's moving a little bit? See how it's still shiny? It's actually not doing too bad, but it's starting to run a little bit. Let me see if I can get a little bit more monomer in there to make my point. <laughs> when you place a bead on and it's kind of running, see how it's moving? It's kind of falling down here. If that was a giant bead, it would just run right off. We don't want that. We don't want beads like that. And that's the beauty of these tips. You can do this over and over and over. You don't want to be chasing a bead. We're not looking to make a nail at this point. We just want to create that correct ratio. So I've got a bit of a bigger bead this time. Why is that? Because I left it in the monomer a little bit longer. I got more monomer. The monomer determines the size of your bead. Once you let that bead sit there for a little bit, especially when you're talking low odor, you can go in and start to shape. And I'm just playing with the bead, I'm not looking for any shape in particular. I'm just gonna start playing with my bead. Here's another trick. When you're starting to play with your bead, release the brush, get rid of some monomer. Every time you go play with the bead, get rid of monomer. If you release the monomer, then you won't be working with a wet, runny bead. I'm just smoothing it out now. Just seeing if I can smooth it out. There we go. Now remember, I'm not making a nail here. I'm just playing with beads. Let's try the white. Now white can have a little bit of a different consistency. Because white has more of a stronger pigment, it can feel a little bit different. So it can be a little bit drier. 
So if you do the same on a monomer and then go for the bead, you might find that it's a bit different with the white or even any other pigmented acrylic that you're using. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get a bead of white. I'm going to place that on there. I'm going to release. See how it's sitting there waiting? That's the kind of consistency you want. A lot of times, especially when we're doing white, we might be doing French. And if we're doing French, we do kind of want a hard line. Let that sit for a second. I'm sort of calling it letting it absorb into itself. And then you can start to play. Start to see if you can mold that little bead wherever you want it to be. So if you find your brush might be getting kind of gunky, I'm going to get a little bit of alcohol. You can just put it in a shot glass or a sushi dish or a, the lid. <laughs> so if you want to clean your brush, you can put it in monomer and maybe get some of it out. And if it's getting a little bit stubborn, you can put it in alcohol. Don't put it in acetone. Don't put a synthetic haired brush in acetone. Acetone will eat the bristles. Okay, don't do that. So if you're going to go into some alcohol, sort of saturate it into the alcohol. Now it won't eat away at the acrylic because that's what acetone does, right? It bloats it and it removes it. But you can just get a sharp end like a cuticle stick and just see if you can, if there's any excess and just get your tip of your scissors or a cuticle stick to pull anything out. There's nothing in here, but I was just demonstrating in case you did get something in there. And then you want to condition it back into your monomer and get those bristles all nice and wet. And your brush will be happy again. See that? You really want to take care of your brush because it makes all the difference. It's your, it's your tool that you're working with. Okay, so we've got that on there. Now this is slow setting once again. We might be able to take it off. We did a little work there. Oh, no, it kind of wants to stay on there. Okay, so I'm going to pop this off. I want to show you the learning process because it's easy to watch someone do it right, right? But you want to see what you're looking out for that you want to try to avoid. And that is, I'm going to try to see if I can get a super wet bead. It's harder to get a super wet bead with a synthetic brush, which is a good thing. Okay, let me see if I can show you too runny of a bead. See that? See how that's running everywhere? That's the bead you want to avoid. And that's once again, if you have too much monomer comparison to powder, see how I put that on? And it's just kind of running. We just want to avoid that. And it's, it's really easy to do, especially with the fast set <laughs> or in a natural hairbrush. Okay, so let's see if we can get too dry a bead. So we want to take that and we just want to get it out of the brush as much as possible. Remember, the monomer determines how big the bead is. That's if you have the right amount of monomer in there, right? Okay, so this is too dry of a bead. These are just kind of cakey <laughs> and they often will just kind of roll off. Look at that. It won't even melt. <laughs> it's just kind of, sometimes it'll just like bloop and they just roll off. This is a very dry little bead. See if I can get it back up here. See that? It's just not changing at all. Sometimes they'll just roll off. Okay, so that's good. Now you know what a runny bead looks like and now you know what to drive a bead looks like. So our goal is to just keep practicing over and over and over the right consistency. So it's push your brush in, release on the side a little bit, Place in your powder, hold for three or four seconds, place your bead on here, complete with cat hair. <laughs> and I just let it sit for a few seconds. And that way you can just sort of clean your brush in the meantime, and then you can go in and start shaping and playing with it. So you'll develop your own style. When you go to place your bead, here's a few ways you can do it. It doesn't, there's all sorts of ways you can do it. There's not like a hard and fast way to do it. 
I actually do it kind of differently. I go like this. I do this often. I catch myself doing it. I twirl it on. I think that's because I got used to doing glitter. I wanted to have the glitter in a certain position, so I would twirl it. And another way you can do it is you can just pop it on there like this and see how it's just sort of settling in itself. So you can just sort of like pop it on. Now if you pop it on and it sticks back, then, the, then too much monomer in your brush. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm going to try to do the pop on method. So I'm going to go pop on and try to come away. See that in the brush there? And you can see it's actually running a little bit. That's too wet. And that's why a bead will not pop off for you because it's too wet. So for it to pop off, you want to go like this. Get the right mono monomer in your brush and it just sits there waiting for you. It's kind of a funny looking, doesn't matter, doesn't have to be a perfect circle. That's a good bead, I can work with that. Okay, let's take that off. So another way is to gather your monomer, release a little bit, pick up your bead, and place it where you want it, and then swipe it away. That's fine too. As long as you got the right consistency, it doesn't really matter how you put it on there. Where you put it on does matter sometimes, <laughs> but how you put it on is totally just a style you may develop. Here's another way of how you pick the bead up. One way to do it is you just simply rest the very tip and the edge of it in your powder, and then you place the bead. Okay. You can bounce it in there. One, two, three. And you can do this, bouncing is more of a counting method. It's really just to make yourself accountable for the time that you're in there. And three is a good number. You hold it about three seconds. So I just hold it for three seconds, but you can bounce it. And another way might be that you can drag it. As long as you're dragging it about the same amount of time. I don't like that one as much because, well, look, you can see it, it's a little bit powdery. It's a little bit edgy around the powder. So I personally like to just hold it in there really steady so I know how long and it's all absorbing at the same time. I don't bounce because that kind of interrupts the absorption time frame, and I don't drag because it's kind of gathering up on the side and it's not really all getting in there at the same time. So I kind of like to just hold it. That's just my method. But you'll develop your own style. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna make a nail, and then we're gonna file it. Okay, I'm gonna make an ombre so we can file and finish. Okay, so when you're finished putting, making the nail that you want, you want to clean the brush in the monomer. You just want to run it through the monomer. Make sure there's no product in your brush. What I usually do is put it in the dish, whatever you got, whatever you're working with, and sort of twirl it a little bit. And if you don't see any like, like crookedness, then it's okay. And then I'll even do it on the paper. Just sort of roll on your paper towel, roll the tip of your brush out, and if everybody looks okay, then it's okay. Make sure you do have monomer in it. I will leave the monomer in it. It's a very nice conditioner for your brush. And that's why you have a cap. Make sure that you put your brush right in the cap to protect it. Okay, right now I'm gonna let this dry. It takes about three-ish minutes, depending on the room temperature. And then I'm gonna run it under cold water for just a few seconds. And then we're ready to file and finish. The idea of filing is you want to take away all the high points 
and match them with all your low points. If you do that by filing the high points, you're going to even it all out to match the low points and you're going to end up with a smooth nail. That's all I'm doing here. And if it's easier, you can take it off of this little stand and you can simply hold the nail like this. Now keep in mind, you're only going to get really to the filing point once you kind of get your beads down and that you're happy with them. You don't have to make them perfect before you get to this point. Remember, there is no such thing as that. No such thing as perfect. We just want to get it going and you're not going to make them the way you want even at first, but just go for it. Leave the beads down, go for it and file and sort of go through the motions of making the nail because sometimes when you get to the end point, it really helps you understand what you wanted to do different each time you see a different area. So just go for it. Make those mistakes. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes. Sometimes we can be hard on ourselves. Like I'm, I'm even looking at this going, oh, I could have done that ombre better. <laughs> so we all do that, but try not to get too wrapped up in that. Okay, so I've got... The, uh, that was a medium and I've got my fine file and the fine is to go around the edges and make it nice and smooth. We sort of got like a nice, I think I'm going to go a little bit more round. It was sort of square-ish on that tip that we put on there, but I think I'm going to make it a little bit more round. That's nice. And the reason why we run it under warm water is because it has a dispersion layer. That's what it helps it go slower setting and also have a low odor. And that dispersion layer, we just want to remove. It's not any different than gel polish, really. That's why gel polish doesn't really smell either. Or even um, easy gel or hybrid gel, right? Okay, now I have a sanding sponge. And you can take that guy and sort of go over top of the whole thing. And that just sort of prepares it for your last step. Okay. Now your last step is your top coat. You can put a nail polish top coat on, or if you're going to do a nail polish, make it a little bit smoother. But I prepared this for a gel top coat. Okay, let's put that in for a cure. Now let's take a look at some photos of some other nails you can make with this kit. So if you're interested in doing gel nails, check out nailcareer.com for my gel starter kit. <laughs>